anyway, let's let's just uh, shift gears and go into uh, getting attention titles. Okay, I noticed that Clint did an either or title, acclimate or perish. Um, I'm doing organize or, or die, but we are in good company. How many of you are familiar with this? Okay. Do you know the whole story behind it? Okay, well good, you're going to find the whole story behind it. Ben Franklin actually created this political cartoon and he published it in his, uh, his uh, newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette, on May 9, 1754. Most people associate this with the War for Independence. However, that is not when it was first used. It was used in 1754 to get the attention of the other colonies uh, to unite to fight the French and the Indians. It was resurrected in uh, 1765 to unite the colonists, uh, but Ben Franklin really didn't want it used that way. So here you have a little history lesson. Join or die. Did it work? And it did work twice. So what we are hoping to do with what I'm presenting to you today, if I'm going to do this right, is organize or die. And the choice is clear. Organizing locally is the future of this party because local organization is foundational to the success of our party. Um, so let's look at what we have up here next. Okay. So the first thing that I think we need to discuss is, uh, nope, I think I skipped one. No, I didn't. Okay, we're going to skip this and we're going to go to there. It's all about you and me. Our republic will be kept by you and me. There isn't a president that we can elect, a senator, a state representative, a local council member that can do what liberty demands of us. Okay, this is a government of the people. Okay, this is what it's always been about. Power has been given to the people. I encourage every one of you to go home and read the first uh, introduction to your state constitutions, and you might be amazed at what they say. So that, that's a little homework task for you. The price of liberty is high, but the loss of liberty is even greater. And we must be willing to pay the price. The price is going to be coming when we organize locally. It is not a task for the faint of heart. It is not a task for those who want instant turnaround success because it doesn't happen that way. It does not happen that way. So let's start dealing with the obstacles. Let's get the obstacles out of the way so that we can go on with a positive attitude. Now, that elephant was not chosen purposely because I do not consider the GOP to be an obstacle. I believe the GOP is imploding and it's probably a worthy death, okay? It's probably a worthy death. Um, no one knows who we are is the largest obstacle that we face. I'm very excited from the two gentlemen that have uh, presented a program that we feel is going to be very instrumental in getting us out there, to getting our name out there. So that's one of our biggest obstacles. Another obstacle that people always push our way is that it's either, you, it's either the two-party domination. It's either got to be Republican or Democrat. Third parties can't win. How many, who has ever heard, oh, a third party can't win? Which is the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life. It's like they're saying it's an impossible, that it can't ever happen. Well, of course it can happen. Uh, media blackout is another one that I hear frequently. Well, we can't ever do anything because we never get any attention from the media. And then this last one, which is really sad, I'm sorry I've done this, it's just too late. There's nothing we can do at this point. Well, uh, basically what I feel about most of that is those are excuses. Those are all excuses for us to not do what we need to do. 
Uh, it's time to get out of those self-destruct modes and to basically just get into the opportunities that all of these situations present to us. Uh, so let's look what we have up here. Okay, making us known. It's our job. It's not the media's job to make us known. It is our job to make us known. Uh, neither major party in this country has the approval of the people at this time. We have to work to elect locally. We Using the internet creates opportunities for our messages to be heard. And it's not too late because this is our time. There's never been a time in the existence of this party when more people are open to the message that we have and that we can bring and that the hope that we can bring to them. We don't bring people to hope discussing what's wrong with the two major parties or what Trump did this day or what Obama did or what so-and-so did. Who cares, okay? Quit wasting your energy on people that are just dragging everybody in the country down and move into positive things that present a message that can give people hope. That gentleman, Matt, man, you're a hope-getter guy, okay? I mean, you, you install and instill, I should say, feelings of hope in people. That, that's really important, that things can be different, that there's people out there who have a passion to make a difference. Matt's probably only one of a lot of people that we don't know about, okay? But we have to give them an opportunity to be part of what we are and who we are, and we have to find them and say, come alongside of us. We have a message that can change what's happening in this country. Okay, all politics are local. Who have ever heard that? Have you ever heard that saying, all politics are local? Okay. The Constitution Party has ignored this maxim to its own peril. After 25 years, the majority of Americans have never heard of our party. We have failed to make ourselves known in our communities. We must honestly face this fact, admit our mistakes, and choose to make a difference by building the party in the communities where we live and work. Now, I want to ask you a question here, and this is an important question. We have heard from people today that are yesterday and today to the executive committee that have the potential of making our name very well known. And the purpose of doing that will eventually be to direct them to us. Direct them to us. Now, I'm going to ask some hard questions. What is your state party going to do with them? Do you even have a state party? What if you get a call from uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas? I'll just say Jonesboro, Arkansas. Uh, you, 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 and I don't even know who we have in Arkansas. I don't even know if we have the, anybody in Arkansas. So, uh, is anybody here from Arkansas? I'm going to be picking on anybody that's here. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm safe. I'm just using. It. I don't know really. I don't know that we have much of an organization going in our, I'll pick on Missouri. Okay, never mind. I'm going to pick in Missouri. What is the Missouri party going to do when we get a phone call from um, Branson? Hey, you've got a donor. You've got a, an interest party. They've donated money to your party. They really want to get involved in the local community. What, you, what do you got going on there? Uh, nothing. We don't have anybody in Branson, okay? So I'm going to pick on us first, okay, Doug? Is that all right if I pick on us? Okay, Doug says we do have some people in the area. Who do we have? <laughs> oh, is that Green County? Oh, we do have people in Green County. They're not organized, though. They were at one time. They're not anymore. Right. So Missouri is not prepared at this time to handle an influx of people who call from a particular community and say, I'd really like to get involved. What, what do you have going on? Uh, well, nothing. What do you want to help us do? We're not ready. We've had 25 years to get ready, and we're not ready. 
this can only be pointing towards us. Joan, I'm looking at Joan back here. Joan, would you have liked to had 4,500 and something counties that we have in this country organized when Daryl started his campaign? Do you think it would have made a difference? I know it would have made a difference. So are we going to continue to ignore farming local county, and I'm going to get into some different ideas I have on that, organizations to the peril of this party growing? You know, we, we can't do that. We've got to do it differently. So we saw that. Okay, so here we go, folks. I am not a feminist, so I added Ray the Riveter on here, okay? I wanted to make sure nobody thought this was a feminist party because it's not. Although a lot of women do a lot of work in this party, I will say that. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get it done. Okay, organizing at the local level. The fight for liberty will be truly won in our own backyards. People will come to us no sooner than they understand basic principles of liberty and basic principles of constitutional governing. If they ever get a glimpse of that, they have nowhere else to go but to the Constitution Party. Nobody else, no political party in this country, libertarians are, eh, but they're not really there, okay? They're not really there. We are the only party that has the message that really can resonate with Americans. We need to have our fingers on the pulse of our communities socially and politically. We need to demonstrate the ideas of our liberty through our deeds and not just our words. We must create social media presence to find like-minded people in our communities. Clint has done a wonderful job of starting that ball rolling. What we want to do and what we should do is take that down to the local level. We must also be present physically at community events. Um, these are some things that uh, we should already know. Okay, so this, this might be a little bit out there, but I think we need out there things. I guess every state organizes differently, but I'm sure at some point you have some sort of of a county committee or something that is named something similar for your political organization, okay? So we have a county committee versus a county club. Let's look at what the differences are and how they can be used and how we should use them. So the county committee is a political entity of the party. It is members of the party only they deal with the internal issues of the party. They deal with registration and reporting to the state. They deal with choosing and vetting candidates. And the political structure of the party starts at the county level and then grows from there. We have states that are organized with state committees and uh, like a, like you have like our executive committee we have an organization at the top, but we have nothing on the bottom. Nothing on the bottom. So it's like somebody walking out on a cliff thinking that they're going to stand, and they plunge to the bottom because there's nothing below you. You have to have some sort of foundation if you think you're going to grow a state organization. The county club is what I am re recommending that this is where we start focusing on our attention, is to start with county clubs. It's a different type of entity. It has different purposes. It is strictly for promoting the party. Members and supporters can belong to your county club, okay? It's our public persona to your community. The county committee is not a public entity. It's a private entity, it's a political entity, and it deals with political structures and state election laws. It is not anything that we should be presenting to our local community. Um, they are informally organized. We do internal auditing of our clubs. We make ourselves accountable. We don't go into this just thinking that we're just fly by the seat of our pants. We elect officers to this county club. We have 
checks and balances so that nothing, you know, is, you know, well, I won't even go into there, but you know what I mean. Um, its purpose is attracting potential members and candidates. The club is the incubator for the county committee members, okay? This is where you need to find the people who are really leaders, who are really totally committed, versus the ones who are, well, yeah, I'm interested, I'd like to, yeah, I like you people, but oh, I, I, don't, I don't want to run for office. And of course, some of them people, we don't even want to run for office, but we do want their support. We do want them to be people who can advocate for what we're doing. So I am suggesting that the county club is the place to start. You, you have um, well, we, almost all of our New England states, no state is even organized. Why can't we find and talk with these people that are in these states where there is no state organization whatsoever and suggest to them, why don't you just start working at your county level, see if you can't find some like-minded people, start having some meetings among yourself, and then begin to start having some public meetings. Even though New England is very liberal, there still are constitutionally minded, liberty minded people who live in those places. They would probably love to find someone else to meet with and talk with that understands where they're coming from. You get a county club started and one, it spreads. It can spread very easily. In Missouri, I'm going to go to here now because this is, I'm going to show to here, but I want to talk a little bit about what's happening in Missouri and this is why this is a critical situation. Missouri has been on the ballot and had ballot access since 2006. We had to achieve ballot access three times. The third time was 2000, well, two, no, we've been on the ballot. 2007 was the last time we worked for ballot access. We achieved it in 2008 and we have maintained ballot access every cycle since then, except 2016. What this means for us, Missouri is facing for the first time since 2008. In 2018, we could lose our ballot access if we do not gain 2% of the vote. It so happens that that is the cycle that we have two statewide candidates, a uh, United States Senator and the Auditor. That's all. We've got two hopes of maintaining our access. I do not want to lose ballot access. When I saw those election results and realized that we were facing that in 2018, I've been here too long, I don't want to do a ballot access drive. I do not want to do this. So I sat down and I thought, this, this can't happen. We've got to do something serious in Missouri to make sure that somehow or other we do not let this happen. We've never formally actually organized any kind of an organ, organizational formal plan to organize our state. We've done it informally. So I sat down and I just sat down at the computer one day and I just started outlining and making a list. In a brief nutshell, this is what we're doing. We have 114 counties in Missouri and we have St. Louis City which is a political entity to itself, okay? It's not part of St. Louis County, it is its own political entity. So I called it the 114 plus one plan. Our plan is to start with the bare basics, with the leadership that we have in those counties right now, and ask them all to create a social pres presence for their county. So, I sent it out, I chose a, the leaders that we had, and it ended up to be like 18 or 19 that we considered leaders in our counties uh, and across the state. I won't go into all the details, but at this point we have, what is it Sandy, four, five. five. We have five counties that now have a Facebook presence. Each one of the counties is displaying the Constitution Party. Do you like our little deal, what we did here? We incorporate, Sandy did this, okay, I'll give the kudos to Sandy. I say we, like I did something with this, I didn't. Uh, 
Constitution Party of Missouri that you see there has been our, our banner on our website for quite some time. She took our little new logo and put it to the side, and then she put what I call our tagline, the Party of Integrity, Liberty, and Prosperity. I think it's very appealing. It's very appealing. What I did is I went down to, I just moved to Crawford County. That's where, and I don't have, but our Facebook page would have that. And then this is our, uh, what do you call that, profile picture? Yeah, the, okay. That is our county courthouse there in Crawford County. Isn't that lovely? In God we trust in our county courthouse. And so that's our profile picture. And then below our profile picture, it says Constitution Party of Missouri, Crawford County. Okay, that's the county that I live in right now. Uh, John has in St. Charles County where they live. Uh, did you do that? Okay, John did that. His says Crawford, uh, same thing, uh, St. Charles County, and you chose a couple different pictures to put in there. Okay, thanks. Mine's probably better. Yours doesn't say in God we trust. Okay, so do you have the stats on your page right now by any chance? It's more than what I have. Of course, St. Charles County is like a, what, class? something county okay so Rodney did a paid advertising I created this two weeks ago I did a paid advertising that basically I did it for seven days it was directed to only people in Crawford County and in those seven days I gained 48 new likes of people who are in Crawford County from Crawford County and uh, it reached 1,752 people. 1,752 people at least had some exposure to this. 48 people liked it and are now members of my Facebook page. What I've done on my Facebook page is the first thing I wanted them to know, excuse me, what did I just do? I hit one of the buttons I wasn't supposed to hit, right? Thank you. I wanted them to understand what we're about. So I did one post. I did a post that basically, you know, introduced the Constitution Party to them, uh, told them what we, what we were desiring to connect people who were liberty-minded in our county, and then I wanted to let them know what we stood for. And so I did a post that I did the uh, write-up we have on integrity. I followed it the next day with one on liberty from our website, and then I followed it the third day with prosperity. I've added some other posts of interest, so I probably have posted maybe 14 or 15 articles on there. My next step is going to be somehow reaching out and asking a question. Hey, I'm interested in doing a meeting in Crawford County and I'm new here. What would be a great place for us to have a meeting? See, who, we'll see what people will respond and then choose to have some sort of a meeting. It's a simple thing to do. It's not that complicated. Now, if we were doing this in all 114 counties plus St. Louis City, we would begin, uh, first of all, you would type in Constitution Party of Missouri, and all of a sudden you would see this long list showing Facebook pages for every county in Missouri. This is simple. This can be duplicated very easy with very little effort. It's not difficult. Take from what, and you don't even have to have a state organization to do this. Just be a county club and start talking to people about liberty. It's just very, it's really simple. It's not difficult. This is how we get our party known. You talk to everybody you see. I go in the grocery store and I talk to, I strike up conversations just to see where it's going to lead. Well, hey, how are you today, you know? And inevitably people will sometimes, strangers will even say, oh, I'm so aggravated over this tax thing, you know? Really? Oh, well, you know, have you ever heard about the Constitution Party? No, of course they haven't. But it's, you just have to talk about us. And so this is a way that allows us to talk to a lot of people in, uh, and very, so I'm going to run an ad probably once a month. I'll pay for it myself. It's just not that big of an investment. Just pay for it myself. I won't even ask the party to pay for it. Be there, be heard, and be noticed. 
how are people going to know about you unless you are a presence in your community? Every community has fairs, festivals, and whatever that's a community event. The Constitution Party needs to have their presence there. Needs to have their presence. Doesn't cost a whole lot. You can normally pick up, you can spend, can you give 10, 12 hours of your day to sit in the booth and be available if anybody wants to ask? Is that a lot to sacrifice people? Is it? No, it's not, okay? Participate in local organizations that serve the community. We have to be members of our community. Why would they trust us unless they know us? If you're a member of your community, pick whatever it is you're interested in. If you're interested in rescuing strays, join the local whatever stray rescue organization it is. You will find people who you at least connect with because you have a love for pets and you don't want them mistreated. But that just expands as you begin to take that interest you can take your other interests right along with it because it, these things will come up. Everybody's been in a community where a tragedy has happened. Well, let's show people that we believe, not only do we believe that welfare is not the role of the state, it is the role of individuals, the church, the community, charitable organizations. Let's put that in practice. Why couldn't you, as a Constitution Party club, decide so-and-so who's facing tremendous hospital bills, I don't know, each of you contribute $25, do a fundraiser? I would prefer doing something visible. Let's raise money for the Jones family. They're in desperate need of help right now. We're going to do a bake sale, or I don't care how you do it. Just do it. Be creative. It's your deal. But do it for a local cause because the Constitution Party lives what it preaches. We will be the welfare of our community with our churches and with individuals, with families. We will meet the needs of our community. We do not need government. Government is, that's not the role of government. We have to be what we say we are. Be a good neighbor. You know, who was it that said we were the party? Who was it that said we st have to stop being the party of no? Who said that today? Clint. Clint is right. We have to stop being the party of no. We're the party of yes. We're the people who care. The Constitution Party people care about things. We do. Don't you as individuals care about things? Yeah. Well, let's do that. Let's start acting it out. That's the community. That's the social part. Here's the political part here. Who here has attended, well, probably I'll get a lot of good hands to show on this, attended a council meeting or somehow or other cultivated a relationship with an elected official? I, probably most people in this room. Now, if we were asking that someplace else, maybe that wouldn't be happening. But we're a different breed, okay? Um, how many of you have actually attended a local county council meeting? Yay, good job, okay. You can make a difference. You really can. Um, how many of you have actually tried to cultivate a relationship with an elected official? Not to just go in and tell him all the wrong things that he's done. There's Ricardo. Yeah. Okay. We do have to. These are people. These are people. Even though they seem like they might be the enemy, they're really not. They're people just like you and I. I'll never forget, I had a Democrat treat me with such kindness in Jefferson City one time when I was testifying and got into trouble on an issue and the Republicans on that committee were attacking me. He rescued me. That was so meaningful to me that I went there the next day and I talked to him and I said, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you did for me yesterday. He said, hey, I've been there. I know what it's like to be new around here and not know all the ins and outs. He said, uh, I just wanted to help you out. That was the Democrat, guys. He was a person who cared. We need to care about these people. They have lives just like we do. Uh, we will make more inroads with who we are by caring about things. Serve, on, how many, anybody here in, in local government in any way? 
Anybody? Okay. Okay. Here we go. There are thousands upon thousands of unfilled positions in county governments. Unfilled positions. It gives you an inroad to know what's happening in your county. You go on and serve on the water district. Uh, planning and zoning might be tough to get into because they're pretty well handpicked. But there's lots of other boards that can you can get in there. You can know what's going on in your county. You can be part of it. Was it Frank that you shared the story about the uh, lady who served on some sort of, in North Dakota, South Dakota, served on some board, and they ended up giving her a judgeship because of her faithful service. And so she's now been appointed a judgeship. It was in, I don't know, I, I've heard that story from somebody. Uh, why not you sponsor the town halls, invite speakers in, educate and inform on the issues? It takes a little bit of effort, folks, and you have to be willing to face the fact that you might have only three people. Was it Aaron you were saying you only had two people show up at a meeting? You may only have two people show up at a meeting, but you're faithful. You have that meeting, you do it, and eventually your faithfulness is rewarded. Your faithfulness is rewarded. All right, here's my, I'm not a motivational person. I'm more like the person who likes to point out everything you're doing wrong. Okay, so here was my motivational thing for the, for the day. All right, number one, the sky is the limit for a county club. You are not limited in any, whatever you can think of to make yourself known and to be a part of your committee, you can go as far as you want to go with this. There are unlimited opportunities to serve, inform, and influence your community. Okay. Don't miss this time and place in history to make a difference. This is our time. Right now. Not next year, not 2020. This is our time. We start now. If we don't, we will miss this. Okay, we will miss it. Uh, your time and efforts will not be for aught. You may not think you're influencing people. You may not ever hear. But you will be surprised at how many people will sometime at some place say, you know what you said? I ended up voting for that guy. I can't tell you how many people I got phone calls and stuff, email messages. Oh, I voted for Daryl because of what you had to say about him. Amen. Okay. Even the smallest piece in a puzzle is needed to complete the picture. Do not sit there and let yourself be deceived by the fact that you have no gifts or talents or anything that you can contribute. The smallest piece of a puzzle is still needed to complete the picture. There are things that you can do to help. Make your mark. Do your part. You are called for such a time as this. That's it, folks. Well, if you don't think that working in your community will cause the name of the Constitution Party to be grown, you're sadly mistaken because it will. Yes, Joe. I say the year that we got 54 candidates on the ballot, uh, the cartoonist for the RJ, which is our largest circulation newspaper in Nevada, made a cartoon of that. It had a bull breaking into ye old uh, political china shop. Yeah. Uh, I make, maybe it's an establishment china shop or something. And, and uh, labeled on the bowl was Independent American Party. And all the china was going like this. Okay? I have, a, I have the original mounted in my office. It's about this big. So if you do stuff that's, that's newsworthy, like who, who was it that said that? Yeah. Suffle beam. That was news, and it was very, it was big news. They couldn't believe that this nothing party suddenly had 54 candidates statewide. So one of the best, best ways to get news is to have candidates, a lot of them. Joe, let me ask you a question. 
Joe, sure. question for him real quick. She has a question for you. How many counties are organized in Nevada? I think we have about uh, 10 out of 17. Okay, that's that's a large percentage. That makes the difference. That makes the difference. It right does. There. And we're and we get a few more, well, like one or mo one more every election season. We're we're working on getting them organized. Nevada has a lot of very rural counties. It might have one small town in a huge county that's as big as right. uh, yeah. that's as big as New Jersey. <laughs> Clark County, where I live, is bigger than a lot of eastern yeah. states. So we have a lot of a lot of sagebrush to cover. Another question? Was there another question? Yeah, the trusted news guy in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he said, "Where are your candidates? I've been trying to contact these people. They will not return my phone calls. Yeah. I want to talk to your candidates. Can you find them for me? That's not a problem, Rick. I'll take care of it." And Rick covered us. He yeah. covered a uh, brief. Where'd Daryl go? He was sitting right here. Yeah. He's right here. He, he briefly covered Daryl Castle. Uh, not to a great extent, but Daryl Castle was all over Grand yeah. Rapids News one day. And because uh, that's the times are changing and people are wanting to hear and know about what we're doing. Cindy, I had a question with um, why Country Club. County Club. Um, why County Club as opposed to a, a party? Is, did, as far as organize, if, if you have a county that wants to organize a party, as okay, opposed here's, to organizing... Here's why. We've had, we've had county committees organized in Missouri. And here's what happens. We have stringent reporting requirements. You have to have a, just like the state organization, you have to chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. You have to report quarterly. You have to have a bank account. You have to report to the Missouri Ethics Commission. You have to register with the state. With a county club, you have to do none of those things. None of those things. You are free to do whatever you want in your community to promote to the normal people. As I said, that club should be the incubator for the structure of your political party. Because you, we had people that would form these committees, and they'd get the necessary officers, and maybe have a few other people. And next thing you know, well, we had one that they didn't even know that they had to do the requirements. And thank goodness we had a good relationship with the Secretary of State and the Missouri Ethics Commission. And they basically gave us grace because they didn't really realize they even had to file these reports quarterly. So you get you don't have any of that with the county club. And the Republican Party does this too. They have their county committees and they have Republican clubs. Entities. They're both needed. Yes, absolutely. We don't I'm not saying don't have no, a county not. committee or a political structure. You can have it. But you may not be able to uphold that political structure because you have nobody below you. Go with your county club, get the people Get them on your side and get them, convince them that we need your help to be an effective political organization in this state. One yeah. All right. Uh, Ricardo Davis from the state of Georgia. Uh, I tell my contacts around the state that, first and foremost, don't try to build something you don't have the wherewithal to build yeah, count your cards. right off the bat. Um, I'm going to add not only an amen, but ask you to consider that you may not have to build your county club. There may be a tea party or some other conservative organization nearby you that's already running. All you have to do is jump in and serve and be an influence there. That's basically the path through which the Constitution Party of Cherokee County, Georgia, got started. We participated, and when it got to the point where one of the leaders uh, said to me uh, during one meeting, uh, Ricardo, uh, when are you going to get your uh, local party started? Because these Republicans aren't doing anything around here. At that point, I knew I had the core group to light up my county party. 